what's going on everybody welcome to the best mountain farm so this is going to be our introduction to the farm for people that's never seen it uh me and aiden here we just moved up here just a couple days ago and just trying to get situated and get some stuff knocked out and so we're going to take you around it's a beautiful evening probably the last really nice day of winter if i just had to guess and uh give you guys a tour and tell you a little bit about it and what we've got going on so we might as well start over here while we uh while we're up here and then we'll just make our circle so obviously we got the big orange tractor well a little orange tractor and it's already come in handy down here because it's four-wheel drive and my dad also known as papa hugh doesn't have a four-wheel drive tractor and in these mountains definitely useful so this is what we put up for him uh, last year and you can see this is all the stuff from the homestead a lot of the tools keepsakes pretty much everything we have but we've got it in the dry as a matter of fact here in a few minutes we're gonna have to push everything in there and zip it up because it's supposed to be nasty nasty tonight but we're going to be uh, i'll show you down in the big barn where we're going to dry in a spot in one of the old stables so we can take all the stuff that we're not going to use um i don't have any place to put at the moment and keep everything you know from rotting or or uh, molding or anything but one of the things that i'm hoping to start on here here in january or february is clearing this out we're going to go back with the uh go back with the bank and um go back with the bank we have got a bunch of blocks and stuff and we're going to build a back wall and to begin with pour a just a, a big cement pad and eventually it's going to be our nice uh, log looking garage the shop that we'll be working on a lot of projects with we got the 66 we got aiden's jeep we got the adventure rig for mine and aiden's new channel uh we got a couple of jeeps <laughs> we got well we got a lot of jeeps a lot of jeeps so we got a lot of fun projects while we get that done At some point, I want to, uh, I want to not buy new culvert, but find some used culvert. I'm gonna have to buy it new so that we can, all the spring water, we can run through a culvert so we can have a better watering place out here for the cattle and we can fill this up and this will make a really nice pasture instead of just a, a mud mess. A mud hole, Like, yeah. look at all of this. But I mean, that it's impressive because those are all springs that just come up out of the ground. We haven't had any rain, just a tiny bit of rain in months and it's still flowing a whole lot of water. So there's always plenty of water down here. Now this big barn was built around the turn of the century and a whole lot of the wood that's in this barn is chestnut from the chestnut flight in the late 1800s uh, that, that killed the American chestnuts. So a lot of really valuable wood in here, but this old barn is, is really cool. We'll go take a look inside of it. And before we head into this barn, you can see where they've started now this is going to be probably the last time that we're going to plow any of this um but my mom also known as yaya is working on her propagation her raised bed stuff um so this is all going to be mounded kind of hygge culture beds we won't have to till we'll get better yield and uh it'll be more sustainable it'll be sustainable so that's kind of the whole point of me moving back here and what we want to do is taking just this little what's left of the family farm and making it completely self-sufficient and uh, also being able to turn a little bit of a profit, but not just doing one thing, you know, being self-sufficient self completely um, where it could take care of itself and, you know, everything's going to be organic, no chemicals doing it doing it the way farming should be done and you know in the process 
completely paying for itself and making um, some money. So there's a lot of fun projects. Uh, we fed these guys the other day. I don't see oh. any. They passed away a long time ago. No, these were... Are these new? We just fed these. This is a good one. Oh. Nope, nope. We have awakened the beast. <laughs> I thought there would be a lot more. I'm surprised they weren't moving any more than they were. It's cold. I'm cold. And <laughs> hopefully, if anyone will get stung, it's the cameraman. I hope not. Guess that's what the cameraman's here for, huh? <laughs> I think we need to. What's up, little B? I need to tell Papa that we need to come and feed them again. Okay, well, luckily, crisis averted. I probably wouldn't have been happy. We're, we're going to trouble. We've got some more beehives built, um, and we're going to try and get them to swarm uh, this spring. Have four or five hives here, since that's going to be where all of our garden and, and everything is. You know, we'll be able to pollinate ourselves. So that's going to be our. Um, that's going to be good. We got Boozham over there coming out of the mountains with his <laughs> white lightning jug. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Boozham is the local legend of uh, the Sasquatch. And up here you can see this is going to be, um, it is Papa's wood shop, but we want to make it better. We're going to, we're going to clean it out. Um, I'm going to make some storage up and like a office type deal level with that big window which is where the hay where they would load hay up uh and store hay and then the tear poles then it became a tobacco barn get it uh windproof and so we can heat it a little bit and have a nice big workshop to do some really fun projects here can't wait for that i've been wanting to uh, and pop has been wanting a really nice place so so woodwork for a long time so i don't think we're too far away from that It's a really nice place to work in the, in the spring and summer and fall, but in the winter, it's nippy. <laughs> you could say that. And it's about 90 feet to the top of the weather vane there, so this is not a little barn. So this, uh, the horse stables, the original stables, and right now they're just typical farm holding just uh, random old stuff. Um, the one on the end's cleaned out, and so we're going to get one of the billboard tarps really thick and line the bottom and up the sides and uh, get it all sealed in. Then we can clear that spot out, have a good spot just for storage. There's plenty of places just to put stuff in the dry, but when you got things like heat stakes and furniture, it's kind of hard to find somewhere that's going to preserve everything. So, uh, all coming this winter in the, probably in the next month or two months, this lower shed here, you can see where cows have gotten in here and this is not looking good. Um, they've knocked the supports and all out. So we're going to be jacking up this side, supporting the roof, running big timbers, big timbers down and basically extending this out about uh, probably eight feet, nine feet. Um, well, probably actually just like five feet. But the point is to make a new feed area for uh, the cattle for when it, in the winter. So as you can bring your big round bales in of hay and 
drop them in there, the cows can go in and eat, and then all you've got to do is, you know, take the tractor and, and clean everything out, keep the hay dry. That'll be a pretty big project, not necessarily expense-wise, but time-wise, just to take the old wood off, which I'll definitely reuse, move it back, and then put everything back up. But you can see where the rocks have been knocked out with cattle rubbing on and stuff, and it's just let the old old barn settle a little bit. I think Papa has a plan for how he wants to do it, but more Jeep wheels, of course. Yeah, lots of Jeep parts and motorcycle parts, and <laughs> you know all kinds of stuff. Uh, probably a project here in the next. 48 hours is when uh, I had the trailer up here unloading some stuff and I pulled out and it was a really long trailer and I bumped that gate post and it was just dead rotten and fell over so we got to fix that gate <laughs> oops and uh, if you saw the video a couple days ago on Samson and our neighbor's bull uh, look at that that's, gate uh, that's what happens, gate versus 1,500 pound bull. Um, gate loses every time. <laughs> he just put his big fat head up there and it went. And Aiden, I just thought about a project. We need to keep our eye out. So you see the round where the original silo used to be? Mm -hmm. We need to find us another silo. Yeah. Put like Just make a silo for nothing but like, Put us a hot tub in it. <laughs> yeah, have just a random silo next to the barn and have the sauna. That'd be, I don't know, the cows might try to break into it. Oh, it's rot. We'll just put a good fence around it. That'd, uh, actually, that'd be awesome. That'd be have. awesome. So, my one of my plans sometime, that is the barn I would love to turn into a house uh, one day. Or a brewery or something. It'd be really cool. A brewery? That'd be, that'd be really cool. Mountain brewery? Smoky Mountain Brewery. There you go. That's the only name you'll meet. There's already one of those. Huh? I think there's already one of those. There's probably several of them. So one of the reasons that we're extending that shed and we're going to need a new feed, um, a new feed lot for the cattle in the winter is because this barn, which isn't real old, this barn from, I think around the 50s, um, it's in pretty bad shape right now. You can see the middle supports. You can see where it's sagging in the middle. Yeah, it's sagging. And starting to and bow out. Like, it, the way it's built, I doubt the barn would ever go anywhere. But when, when my granddad had 40 or 50 head of cattle, uh, you no, know, you needed a barn this big to feed. Our plans are really not to have more than five. And over the next few years, we're going to phase into, we're going to phase over to sheep because for the amount of property we have and this really hilly area, uh, it's way more conducive for, for sheep and more profitable than it is for cattle. So just to probably pair down just a, just very few, just for uh, beef for the family and swap over to, to sheep but that's a lot of fence a lot of expense in fencing and a lot of time in fencing so i'll be working on that over the next few years building fences uh for for sheep and getting set up for that um but yeah you can see where you know just after 60 70 years especially as a feed a feed barn really damp and it's just not in great shape so we are going to salvage all the wood and everything we can which is more for beauty sake uh you know doing something cool with it and what you doing girl hey my cows uh, <laughs> and we're going to level this and but we don't want to build a new feed barn here we're going to do that down there so that we can get the sawmill set up and have a good area for the sawmill. So that's one of the things that... Hey, no. That's one of the things that we're going to use to help make some profit on the, 
on the farm here is cutting lumber people bring us um with the sawmill and you can make pretty good money some we used to do doing that some we used to do a while ago uh so this is we are running dangerously low on wood for as many projects as we have and so you can see this is going to be something and also this winter all the wood that's here to be cut me and aiden are going to be cutting it um, i also have some contacts and some people lined up that have big sawmills but they do a lot of veneer wood and the logs is called cull logs every week so like this they probably wouldn't keep because of all the knots and because it's not perfectly straight because they're in it for pure profit but i can go get them and with our mill we can still get plenty of usable wood the logs will be free and then we can um have wood all the wood we need to build with here and also sell some to make make some extra money for more equipment and the stuff we need for the farm someone needs to keep a counter on how many jeeps they've counted <laughs> on the farm already <laughs> we're going to be probably next week getting started clearing this area and cutting taking all the scrap off and if you hadn't really seen the mountain farm but you'd seen the homestead now you can kind of understand why it is like it is it's not my fault it is a genetic defect um and i, I can't help it i mean shoot i got it too i had <laughs> i had multiple cars at one point Well, we still got a couple of the big oak trees we pulled in uh, to get sawn up. We've got some some here that'll make a little bit of lumber, and probably he's got some more stashed at somebody else's house. If not, these can be like six by six or eight by eights for some support. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them all. We'll get everything usable we can. And uh, one of the things we'll start doing for a little bit every hour, so you can see this looks just like a pile of garbage, but this is firewood. We heat the entire um farmhouse with nothing but wood so you know this is all hardwood that's way too small to cut and you see where poppy he's been cutting it and now that well he has to have surgery on his neck so it slowed him down so without me and aiden's here we'll be able to get a whole lot of this cut um stack so it can start get it off the ground so it can start drying and be well seasoned and we have about enough wood here for the next um probably three years but we're going to have a lot more uh, and we'll, we'll have plenty of uses for it. So, And this right here is about the end of the, the property line of fence. That used to be, everything you see in this valley used to be all part of the main farm until my grandfather passed away uh, about 30 years ago. And my grandma had to sell some of it my dad wasn't farming at the time didn't think he wanted to and uh so we still got about 25 acres here which is more than enough to make for a um a very sustainable won't make make millions obviously but it can be a farm where you can not have to go buy very much stuff and still make enough money to uh live on and we'll be uh getting the sawmill shed cleaned up here shortly um so this was and i remember when the original sawmill uh frick was here and it was a six foot blade powered by a big diesel engine uh that set right here so it was a big sawmill and that has long since been uh sold and traded off uh really dangerous running one of those big sawmills anyway <laughs> and so we're going to be cleaning up making better storage for uh equipment and that's also one of the reasons you can see this being on a hill it's hard to hook up equipment and tractors and stuff so we'll probably make the upper part like lumber storage uh with racks and then when that barns down we have the sawmill area and then we'll have a nice big flat area to line up all the equipment and you know store everything nice and neat so what he's saying is it's going to be storage for more cars <laughs> probably <laughs> uh we're going to do some work on the the pond i think it sprang a little bit of a leak but it's also been really really dry um and so the level's down in that but we're going to get some more concrete because 
instead of I finally talked Yaya into free ranging it since we have all my chickens now too. So I'm gonna build a big chicken house, just a, a big chicken enclosure that our nesting boxes and roosting house will be in so that we can feed them inside of just a big chicken wire enclosure. Uh, they'll all come to the food, close that door, they'll sleep at night and they'll be protected by the smaller ones. We can turn them out and that way we can get rid of all this fence, um, have more room here and I'm going to go up a little bit on the level of the pond with the concrete and this will actually be a nice big pond um, and one of the reasons that one of the things we're going to use this pond for is one of the things that is really killing small farmers now is the cost of fertilizer and trying to do everything sustainable and uh, all natural um, don't want to use want to use as little outside fertilizer as possible so with all the ducks and the geese in there where I'm going to uh, acquire a big dirty water pump and we'll take the backhoe and we'll literally just swash around in the center of it. We'll pump that water into some of the big water totes on a trailer and then we'll be able to go over all our hay fields and all our fields and just turn on the pipes and just spread that out as fertilizer. Uh, so that's going to that's going to act as free fertilizer uh, that should do a really good job uh, helping with our yield on our hay for the cattle. And eventually maybe even get a pond liner because if you get we get a really big pond liner then we won't lose any fertilizer in the dirt. It'll be easier to pump out and water everything with. A couple other projects if you watch the uh, watch the homestead channel um, we've got the the big planer here which is going to be one of my pet projects. I'm told to get done sometime this spring or summer. Uh, 30 inch planer uh, healed and so we, we I looked up all stuff so this, this planer was built uh, some sometime around 1870 1875 and my dad remembers it running when he was a little kid uh, and it's really set here for 40 years ever since I can remember but actually about 60 years and it was if Aiden is here the first time I crank it up uh, it will, we will be the fifth generation to use this because it was my great, great, great uncle's planer uh, that, that he had. So pretty cool piece of family history. We're going to get running again and use it to make some really, really pretty, really pretty wood and furniture and whatever else we need out of it. Are we going to go to the doll barn? Yeah. <laughs> And some of the other, uh, I'm bringing all the windows from the home set up and we're going to be helping y'all set up some greenhouses. She's going to be in charge of starting all the plants and, um, you know, trying to do some propagation and, you know, cause that's, that's something that, that, that is very easy to, if you have the room and, and the know-how to make some money on with the elderberries and rhododendron and, and all that kind of stuff. And she's going to be working on all that. So that's more of the how-to and the stuff we'll be doing. So this is why I was saying how dry we've been. This is one of the first times I've ever really seen this spring dry up. Um, normally that pipe is always running. And this gets piped from here and goes over to the duck pond, which is why the duck pond is a little bit dry right now so hopefully with this rain coming in tomorrow and it looks like it's going to rain a lot the next few weeks we'll be able to get some the duck pond filled up and get some water back in the ground just look at the view though like that's something worth killing for this is the oldest barn on the property this bar, this bar was built in 18 uh, 1895 right in that area um my memory doesn't really work much anymore so if i'm wrong i'll have papa hugh correct me <laughs> but my uh original intention when i first decided to move up here was to turn this into like an apartment studio um a little house for me to live in and i decided it'd probably take a little too much money 
uh, to do that with. We have a groundhog problem, which we're also going to be fixing, but uh, we won't be able to YouTube that because I think it goes against some community YouTube standards. Um, but you can see where groundhogs have been digging underneath the foundation. Um, and it has begun to lean and it has started leaning worse over the past uh, year. And it's heading that way. So I'm definitely not going to let it fall. And um, forwards. What? And it's leaning forward as well. Yeah, I'm you can see not that real bad. Uh, this will be another wheat project coming up. What we're going to have to do is we'll have to take and dig. It really won't be horrible, but we're going to have to dig down underneath of the foundation, dig out all the rocks where the groundhogs have backfilled and it's washed. Get back there, move the rocks, use house jacks, jack it back up, rebuild the. If we can get this side jacked back up and rebuild the uh, the foundation under it, it's going to be fine. And I have an idea. I think I can put a big board on this side and use a hydraulic port of power jack, push against that board and jack from the bottom. And I think we'll be able to get it mostly back straight and at least to where it's not going to fall. Cut this tree down. And this is going to turn into Aaron and Papa Hughes. Man, and Aiden's man cave and museum for a lot of the cool memorabilia, old farm equipment. Um, you know, maybe a place to refinish some furniture, just a place to, to hang out with all the stuff that's in boxes or hidden in stables. I actually get it out in the open and show people what it is. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I've got two locations, but I'll probably <coughs> use this one. Oh God. If I can get a decent cameraman. I'm trying, I'm sneezing again, maybe. So I think that probably about right here is where I'm going to put my house and I'm going to build just a small off grid. I uh, might use one shipping container, uh, but it's going to be just a, an off grid log cabin, uh, off grid log cabin type deal. Um, I'm going to run it on solar. So that's going to be a couple years into making a lot of videos on that. But I think, I think that'll be really cool. I'm, I'm just gonna set it right here. A couple of those trees that you can see are already dying, but it'll be a really, really pretty view because you can see all the mountains all the way back into Tennessee back there. And- uh, Is that Tennessee over there? Mm -hmm. And keep a good eye on uh, Papa Hugh and Yaya and have a, just a little place all my own. And then if I ever move down to the big house, Aiden or Michaela one can come live here. I plan and on staying here for a while. So maybe we'll just put him in that barn, not even worry about fixing. <laughs> here's a here's a blanket or two. Deal with it with all the creepy dolls. So this barn hasn't been used since the 50s. And all all, all it's been used for is storage. And uh, the very beginning of the homestead channel, we actually did a video. But yeah, there are I'm gonna go find somewhere one. in here. There's quite a few old baby dolls. There's one right there. Don't worry, I'll have friends. I'll have friends if I decide to stay here. It is real cool, but it is gonna take some work to fix it up. Let's see if we can find another doll. It's like You'll never know when you'll find one or where you'll find one. One might jump out of the ceiling at you. That'd be interesting. But I do think that the old barn is is salvageable. Uh, at least at least for something just you know a little museum. Because as soon as we can get this corner, you see how it's all sloping this way. As soon as we get all this front jacked up and just rebuild the foundation so it stops sinking. It's not going to go anywhere, especially the way that the uh, this barn is built. Locust logs, I mean, these locusts last pretty much forever. And the way this barn is saddle knocked, um, it'd be almost, it'd be very hard to even pull this barn down. Uh, you would have to have a massive excavator or dozer. 
that's definitely not anything that I plan on letting happen. And it's just a really cool piece of family history. And uh, it's a cool, cool looking little barn. So this? we'll be fixing this up, using this for some different, uh, different storage. We'll see. I've got some plans for this. Like I said, an outside man cave setting area type thing. And uh, I just want to make this a cool piece of history that's just, just because. Sometimes that's what you gotta have. The house was built in 1901. And like you can see, like any old farmhouse, multiple additions. Uh, and at the moment, me and Aiden have the whole back part of the house. It's a really big old farmhouse. And- It's deceptively big. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Papa, you have the front part. And so, We'll work, we'll, we'll work on getting our, our place built, but honestly, Yaya really likes having uh, having us there and having company, someone that can actually hear her, unlike <laughs> Papa here. And on our part, me and Aiden like someone that will cook for us and do our laundry, so <laughs> it kind of works pretty well. Um, I never, you never heard that from me though. <laughs> So this, uh, Papa Hugh plowed all this up for me and now for Aiden. And what we're going to do is grow, um, I'm going to set out probably seven or eight rows of pumpkins because they're fairly easy. It's something you don't make a whole lot on, but that they don't require a lot of time. And then come fall of the year, sell them for jack-o'-lanterns or at the um, farmer's market. And then we're going to grow seven, Probably a lot of this will be uh, beans because the greasy cut shorts that we like, they're getting really hard to find. We saved all this, we always save our seed, but we've got like 40 pounds of seed and they bring about a 70 or $80 a bushel right now, which is a lot of money. It's a lot. Um, now it's a lot of work stringing them, but, and picking them, but it's still, it's a farm, so everything's a lot of work. And you gotta avoid eating them while you're picking them. It's also difficult. And this mountain, the the, the, old, the original farm went all the way up to the top of the mountain. Um, and that is Mary Gray Mountain. There is a rock cliff uh, that you can't see where about halfway up the, the the trees have kind of hidden it at this point but the local legend is that a um native american cherokee lady fell in love with a white settler back in uh, the 1800s and i don't remember the exact story of why i don't i don't remember if it was because he got killed or you know something happened and she killed herself jumping off the rock cliff and her name was Mary Gray. So uh, I'll have to find out the rest of the story. All I know is the local legend of the Cherokee, Cherokee uh, woman that that jumped off the rock cliff up there. And it's been a long time since this has really been plowed a lot. So me and Aiden wants to get back in here when we plow and look for arrowheads because there is a lot of arrowheads. Uh, It's just the way that front screen is. Um, so this, moving over to sheep, and right now we farm with uh, kind of helping some cousins out, but trying to be completely sufficient. And we're trying to downsize, you know, what we have. This hay field should produce a whole lot of of hay, but you can see all the scrub. With Papa Hugh's health issues, he hasn't had time to keep it clean. So um, next year, my goal, uh, what I'm trying to talk him into, is the goose poop water from the pond. Um, and it, it is a lot, of, it'll take a lot of work. It'll take about five or six hours every couple of weeks, but every two or three, or about every seven to 14 days, I'll bush hog all of this and rotate the cattle uh, in like thirds uh, rotational grazing so that they fertilize it and keep it ate off but after a year 
of never letting it get anywhere near high enough for any of the weeds to um, to flower and fertilizing it, then overseeding it with fresh, fresh uh, clover and grass, it should make some really good, really good hay for a year after that. And by that time, hopefully we'll have some of our own equipment, uh, hay baler, some stuff we don't have, so that we can take care of things. And as I was saying earlier, we have to uh, declare some some war on groundhogs. Now groundhogs are native and in and of themselves they are not not bad. However, because we they have... don't have any natural predators out here, uh, they overrun everything. The problem is you'll get a cow yes, that'll break a leg. The cow will the cows will step in there and break a leg. And even worse, Papa Hughes will hit them with the tractor when they're up here and roll even more tractors than they already have over on themselves. Uh, yeah. And we're trying very hard to keep that from happening again. We said if he sold that tractor he had, he can't flip it no more. <laughs> so, and that's one of the things that we have going on at the moment. Since I'm up here with the orange tractor, uh, Papa Hugh is selling some of his tractors and the loader so that we can buy some of the other equipment we need to start making this happen and and getting the farm where it needs to go but you can see how it's kind of rough i need to come in here uh with a kubota and a scrape blade and most of these are old groundhog holes you know get it get it nice and smooth again and uh, you know get rid of all the weeds which i'm i will never spray any kind of herbicide because that will affect your bees um, and we want to have that i'm hoping to have enough bees where it's a good source of income um as well as we eat a lot of honey and i like making mead <laughs> it's pretty good so mead and, is and, pretty and, good and in a homestead survival type situation honey is something that is absolutely priceless because it never goes bad ever it's because of the as acids as or field, something in it the high sugar content I and forget. you know they found they found honey in jars sealed in tombs in Egypt 5,000 years ago that is still edible and viable honey. Um, so you can, it doesn't go bad and you can use it to preserve other foods. Um, you know, it's, plus this area doesn't have sugar cane. So to have sorghum, we don't have enough room or anything for sorghum. So, you know, you can trade the honey for molasses and and raw sorghum sugar uh, or you can just use the honey to sweeten everything which i like and i think is better than processed sugar anyway i would have to agree so as you can see the uh people would always say you have so many projects on uh one two three four there's four projects right there. <laughs> people would, but people would make comments, y'all like, wow, you have so many projects on a homestead. How are you gonna get all this done? The the, uh, the homestead didn't even, not even a drop in a bucket to the amount of work and projects to be done here. But now we have a good crew. Yep. And we have a good team. But we'll, we'll I mean, this will never be this. finished. I can't be like, oh, we're going to finish. Like, be with it being a, a funk, a actual working farm. Um, you know, even if every single building, everything was perfect, everything, you're still going to be behind on projects and have a lot to do. So it's going to be balancing, you know, uh, animals and just a daily life on a farm with the other projects we need to get done. Um, both of you guys is here. We'll get it done. And... I think uh, I'm looking forward to it. I sure am. It's nice to be home. So uh, I think one thing I made him not, I didn't mention. So now that Aiden is living in this farmhouse, uh, Aiden is eight or Aiden is the ninth generation um, to live on this piece of property, and so I think that's really cool. Not a lot of people can say that. Uh, so it's, it's nice having him here. Definitely a, a generational home. And we're just going to continue to build on that. Might not be a whole lot of it left, but there's enough of it for us. And um, 
yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be work, but it's going to be fun. So make sure and like, subscribe, and share uh, because it's going to be something different literally every day and <laughs> lots of interesting things, a lot of how to. It'll never um, get boring, that's for sure. Yeah. So don't want to miss any of that. So make sure and subscribe so you can know every time we put a new video out. And uh, more than anything, appreciate you guys watching and we'll be seeing you around.